<sighs> what have you got there? This, my friend, is a pint. They come in pints? I'm getting one. Welcome back to another edition of Two and a Half Pints Homebrew. Uh, back again with another Lord of the Rings inspired beer. This time we're discussing our Fangorn Forest Brown Ale. Version 4.0. This is the fourth time we've brewed a variation of this recipe, but the first time that you, the viewer, has seen it. The recipe has changed. I feel it in the water. I feel it in the malt. I smell it in the hops. Much that was once brewed is lost, for none now live who remember it. It began with the crushing of the great malt. 7% for the specialty malts, Victory, Pale Chocolate, and Caramel 60. 13% for the brown malt, full of coffee flavor and mild roast. And 80% to the Golden Promise, which above all else desires diastatic power. For in these malts was bound the flavor to create a rich, malty brown ale. But they were all of them deceived. For another ingredient was made, Deep in the land of Mordor, in the fires of Mount Doom, the Dark Lord Sabro forged a master hop, and into this hop he poured coconut, cedar, and the will to dominate all brews. One hop to rule them all. One by one, the free beers of Middle-earth fell to the power of the hop, but there were some who resisted. A last alliance of sulfates and chlorides marched against the armies of Sabro, and in the Mashtun they fought for the balance of the mall. Sabro, enemy of the multi beers of Middle Earth, was defeated and some beers that should not have been forgotten were lost. History became legend, legend became myth, and for five years the recipe passed out of all knowledge, until, when chance came, it ensnared another bearer. Well, precious. The hop came to the creature Pepper, who took it deep into the kettles of the misty mountains, and there, it consumed him. Tell to me, my hopes, my love, my precious. Dankness crept back into the forests of the world. Rumor grew of a brew day in the east, whispers of a nameless beer, and the hop of power perceived its time had come. It abandoned Pepper, but then something happened that the hop did not intend. It was picked up by the most unlikely creature imaginable. What's this? A hophead. A hop? Chadwick Baggins of the Shire. <laughs> For the time will soon come when hopheads will shape the fortunes of all. want any more visitors, well-wishers, or distant relations. And what about very old friends? Bend off! <laughs> it's a really nice brew day. Super efficient brew day. No detours, no roadblocks, just start and finish.
So for the mash on this one, we revived our tradition of hot scotchies. We had uh, some of the, the wort, we mixed it with some Laphroaig and- The brown malt base went phenomenally well with some Laphroaig. Um, so we enjoyed some of those. Those hot scotchies were really good. It's been quite a journey. Seven years, I believe, of brewing this particular recipe in one way, shape, or form. It's really been an epic quest of brewing just a, a hoppy brown ale. So this started originally with our uh, dearly departed <laughs> brewing friend, Brandon, uh, the third member of the Funky Chicken Collective, um, who now lives in Illinois. Who you might recognize from the last Lord of the Rings video we posted about a year ago, the only video he's appeared in. Uh, he had the idea that he wanted a beer that tasted like a forest, or <laughs> was reminiscent of a forest. Having something that was very piney, very foresty, I think he was reading Lord of the Rings when he came up with it, if I'm not mistaken, and decided to uh, do the Fangorn Forest. Uh, so to that extent, he came up with a, a brown ale recipe that used some juniper berries, some spruce tips, some fuggles hops for some earthy flavor, some oak chips, I believe Chinook for piney flavor, and then we actually even brewed it with some rainwater we collected during the day, which I don't recommend, but it was boiled, so it was all sanitary. Turned out pretty cool. It was just this supposed to be this really weird, interesting beer. And um, for some reason, we've kept just riffing on a brown base malt beer for our experimentation. We brewed it again. We called it the Merkwood. Went a little bit heavy on the spices there. There was some maybe sage and rosemary, definitely a lot of rosemary. Just way too many <laughs> spices in it, way too much rosemary, way too much. Um, God knows what else we put in there. I don't remember it was a lot of juniper berries again, and it didn't age well. After a while, it just turned into this like medicine tasting beer. <laughs> and then much to Brandon's chagrin, Ben and I turned it into an IPA. The third time Chad and I brewed it was for our infamous five-way IPA day. We turned it into a brown IPA heavy on Northern Brewer, Chinook, and Simcoe. So that one was real kind of piney. I, I really liked it. I thought it turned out really well. And for this one, we decided to do one with 100% Sabro. There's a little bit of Northern Brewer in there, I believe, for bittering. So we had done a New England IPA. Well, the, I'm sorry. The cool guys had done a New England IPA that featured Sabro pretty prominently. And we'd had it in some other beers recently. And we thought it'd be interesting to go use this in sort of a brown ale slash brown IPA. We knew that Sabro can go coconutty and in large quantities it could start pushing towards cedar. So we thought maybe we'd sort of overhop it, try to push a little cedar out of the Sabro this time around. So we of course put too many hops in it and uh, yeah. So the brew day was one of our calmest, quietest brew days in some time, outside of our obnoxious music. Olivia took the boys 
I don't remember where, but she took them for the day. She's taking the harvest to Isengard! She's taking the harvest to Isengard! She's taking the harvest to Isengard! God, 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 God! She's taking the harvest to Isengard! She's taking the harvest to Isengard! She's taking the harvest to Isengard! God, 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 God! The harvest, the harvest, the harvest, the harvest to Isengard! To Isengard! <laughs> Vindolf, my friend, this will be a beer of special magnificence. Big aromas of coconut kind of maybe a little hint of cedar but there is a very unique sabro smell it's not just coconut something a little bit herbal to it which i think sort of goes along with the forest theme flavor wise obviously coconut forward but it does have some hints of cedar to it a little more on the classic ipa side a lot more of the coconut some nice pale chocolate roast that kind of rounds out the coconut i do think the pale chocolate and brown malt really enhance the flavor All in all, this was a, that's a good beer, man. We did have some fermentation issues uh, that we'll get into on our next video, but basically our fermentation chamber, we had a mysterious failure that we couldn't quite figure out what happened, but uh, we noticed that it sucked back a lot of the blow off star sand. Then Sauron stole our star sand and put it in the beer. Moria, you fear to go into that fridge. The dwarves trusted too greedily in their heater. You know what the cold snap awoke in the fermenter of Khazad-dûm. Suck back, and negative pressure, but go ahead and blame a balrog of Morgoth. So, this beer has been 
diluted a bit. <laughs> this is this was not a perfect fermentation. We did have a little bit of the disaster, but yeah. before we dry hopped it, we tasted it. Tasted fine. Go ahead. Yeah, it's not the end of the world that happens. You know, it's not ideal. But. No. Yeah, I wish we didn't have any disasters, but we'll get into it a little bit more in our next video as we play the mystery of the fermentation chamber. Who done it? This beer, though, has turned into like almost like our experimental series, you know? Like, obviously, starting off with the rainwater, pretty freaking weird. And we just <laughs> alluded to rosemary and juniper berries. I mean, it got, it got a little out there, but it was still pretty cool. It was always interesting to see how things paired up with the malt. But this one, this was just a really fun beer to, to make and a fun beer to to see the effects of because we didn't know what the outcome was going to be necessarily when we did it. We didn't know if it was going to be cedar, we didn't know if it was going to be coconut, some or combination. Could, could have been neither. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so it, I think it, it turned out really, really well. Probably brew it again with some new weird hop. Probably no more herbs and spices though. This is not KFC. Uh, we are a brewery or a home brewery or two hobbits who are more interested in the brewing of ales. And nothing else. <laughs> we, we appreciate all the support. So if you would be so kind as to like and subscribe, um, comments are welcome, feedback's welcome. Yeah, appreciate the support. Till next time. Final count of the evening, 42. 42? Well, that's not bad for a pointy-eared elvish prince knight. I myself am sitting pretty on 43. <laughs> 43. I was done with that. There was some left. It's because it's got my backwash all in the can. Oh, no. What's beers, precious? What's beers, eh?